The objective of this screencast is to work on translating words into algebraic or symbolic expressions. We're going to translate from words to expressions, and this is extremely important when you're doing work with applications. So let's recall from a previous screencast, we came up with this equation, t equals 4s plus 4, where s represented the side length of the square pool in yards, and t is the total number of pavers needed to do the job. This t equals 4s plus 4 was an algebraic representation of the input-output rule that we studied in one of the early screencasts. An equation in general expresses the equality of two expressions. So what are the two algebraic expressions, or symbolic, however you want to say it, what are the two algebraic expressions in this equation? Well, one of them is just t, and the other one is 4s plus 4. So while we will study equations in the near future, the equation is an equality of two algebraic express expressions. So 4s plus 4 and t, while they look different, they're considered equivalent to one another. This is like a balance scale here, or a teeter-totter, that they're the same weight. It's balance, t and 4s plus 4 are considered equivalent. We'll talk about equality of algebraic expressions in the coming future, but right now we need to talk more about coming up with the algebraic expressions. And very often, the way we come up with an algebraic expression is simply by translating what the words tell us. Let us take a look at an example. Before we can look at specific examples, there's four specific words that you need to remember from the past. What operation is associated with each of the following words? Sum, difference, product, and quotient. And this is something you simply need to remember. The sum is associated with addition. The difference is associated with subtraction. Product is associated with multiplication. And quotient is associated with division. Notice here that I use the dot to represent the product. Many of you might use an x, but so often we're going to use x to represent a variable in this class that you'll never see me write a product using the x for the multiplication symbol. We also need to know which of the four above operations does the order not matter to do them in. For example, does it matter if you do 5 plus 7 or 7 plus 5 or do you get the same result? Does it matter if you do 5 minus 7 or 7 minus 5? Does it matter if you do 5 times 7 or 7 times 5? And 5 divided by 7 or 7 divided by 5? Well, if you add, the order does not matter. So with addition, the order does not matter at all. With difference, with subtraction, it does. 7 minus 5 is 2. 5 minus 7 is negative 2. With the product, it also does not matter. 5 times 7 is 35, and so is 7 times 5. But with a quotient, the order does matter. You can't flip them around. So however you write down a sum or however you write down a product, it doesn't matter. Whereas you need to be careful when you write down differences and quotients. And also recall from the past that we often use parentheses in expressions to tell a person to do a particular operation first. We'll talk about the order of operations in a coming screencast, but this is what we need to know to help us with our translations. So let's look at a typical example. We want to write each of the following expressions in symbolic form, and we're going to use the letter N to represent the input. That could have been something else, but it's defined as N, so let's use N here. And here's a quick important tip before we get started. Follow the order in the sentence when quotient or difference is used, since both division and subtraction are not commutative operations. Although I've not defined the word commutative yet, ultimately that means that the order matters with differences and quotients. So whenever difference or quotient is used in the sentence, write it down in the order that it shows up. Because remember, 7 minus 5 and 5 minus 7 are not the same thing, for example. So here's our first one. The quotient of 5 and the input. We're talking about the quotient, so the order matters, so we're going to do it in the order that we do it. 5 and the input. So 5 divided by the input n. And notice I wrote that as a fraction. We can think of a fraction as a, a, uh, a division problem. It's also a number in itself. So you could also write, though, if you're more comfortable, 5 divided by n like that. These two things are the same. So the quotient of 5 in the input is 5 over n, not n over 5, or not n divided by 5. It's specifically 5 divided by n, or 5 over n. How about 2 more than the square of the input? Well, we'll worry about the 2 more later. Let's first get this guy right here, the square of the input. Your input is n, 
And if you square it, that means to raise it to the second power. And then we want two more. So how would you make it two bigger? Well, you would simply add two to it. So n squared plus two is the translation of this sentence right here. How about the sum of the input and seven? The sum of the input and seven is the input plus n plus seven. Now, if you'd written seven plus n, Technically, it's not written in that order here, but it doesn't matter. If you'd written 7 plus n, that's completely correct because you can flip things around with addition. The order doesn't matter with the addition. How about 4 less than triple the input? So 4 less than triple the input. Just like we did up here, we got the square of the input first. I'm going to see how to get triple the input, and then we'll worry about the 4 less part. So triple the input is to take the input n and multiply it by 3, not to raise it to the third power. Raising to the third power is cubing, that is not tripling. Cubing grows much faster than does tripling. Now, we don't want 3n, we want 4 less than 3n. So we want 4 less. So how do you take 4 off of 3n? Take it from it, that means you subtract 4 in the back. For example, if you wrote 4 minus 3n, you're taking 3n off of 4, which is not true. We wanna take 4 off of 3n. We want 4 less than triple the input. So we've got 3n minus 4 is the algebraic expression that represents 4 less than triple the input. And finally, how would you write triple the difference of the input and 4? And just like the previous one, let's first notice that there's multiple steps in this one, this one, and this one. Where here, there was only one operation. Division, here there was only one operation, addition. But here we had squaring and addition. Here we had multiplication and subtraction. And we've got a two-part one here as well. So triple the difference of the input in 4. So first, how do you write the difference of the input in 4? Well, that's n minus 4. And again, write it in that order that it shows up. Difference of input in 4. If it said the difference of, of 4 and in the input, then this would be 4 minus n. Now, we want to triple that. Is this triple that difference? If you look at this expression, what's being multiplied by 3? Technically, just this n is being multiplied by 3. We want the entire difference to be multiplied by 3. So to multiply the entire difference by 3, we need a set of parentheses here. Essentially saying you do the subtraction first, and then you do the tripling. So while these last two, they look similar, they are certainly not the same. If you plugged a number in for n here, and the same number in for n here, you do not in general get the same result. So the parentheses play a really important role here. So translating from words to algebraic expressions is a very important skill, especially when you're working with applications.